NVIDIA's upcoming Project 18 Stealth Destroyer is poised to become one of the most heavily armed warships in the Indo-Pacific, featuring an unprecedented 144 missile cells. Designed to address evolving regional maritime threats, the P-18 class will significantly enhance the Indian Navy's offensive and defensive capabilities. The destroyer will reportedly be equipped with a mix of long-range surface-to-air missiles, anti-ship missiles, and land-attack cruise missiles, along with advanced sensors and electronic warfare systems. Development of the vessel aligns with India's broader naval modernization drive and strategic response to increasing Chinese naval activity in the region. Construction is expected to begin by 2026, with indigenous shipyards leading the effort under the Make in India initiative. Once operational, the P-18 will serve as a key asset in securing sea lanes and maintaining maritime dominance in contested waters. During the Kargil Vijay Diwas event, Indian Army Chief General Apendrad Vivedi announced the formation of India's first integrated all-arms brigade, named Rudra Integrated Brigade. This marks a major step towards building integrated battle groups, a vision originally proposed by late CDS General Bipin Rawat. The Rudra Brigade will include armor, mechanized and foot infantry, artillery engineers, signals, drones, logistics and special forces, ensuring fast, full-spectrum response capabilities. Its creation is seen as crucial amid Operation Sindor, hinting at a possible strategic link. The brigade is designed for swift incursions into enemy territory, targeting high-value assets before returning, aligning with Cold Start Doctrine principles. While not a full IBG involving all three military services yet, this move significantly enhances the Indian Army's offensive and coordination capabilities, positioning India stronger against evolving regional threats. In a significant counter-terror success, elite para-commandos of the Indian Army neutralized three Pakistan-based Lashkari Taiba terrorists, including Hashim Musa alias Suleiman, the mastermind behind the April 22nd Pahalgam massacre that left 26, mostly tourists, dead. The targeted strike, codenamed Operation Mahavave, was launched following satellite phone surveillance linked to the attackers. The encounter, conducted by the 24 Rashtriya Rifles and 4 Para Unit, occurred around 11.30 a.m. on Monday. Alongside Suleiman, the other two killed were identified as Jibrin, accused in last year's Sonamarg tunnel attack, and Hamza Afghani. Weapons including an M4 carbine and two AK rifles were recovered. The action follows the broader Operation Sindor, launched on May 7, to dismantle cross-border terror infrastructure. Additional troops were deployed, amid intelligence of more terrorist presence in the region. India is moving steadily toward finalizing the design of its Project 76 Next Generation submarines, within a year, marking a key milestone in achieving underwater self-reliance. LNT Defense's J.D. Patil confirmed rapid progress in collaboration with the Indian Navy. The project, aimed at replacing the delayed Project 75I, envisions 12 indigenous submarines to be built in two batches of six, with the second batch featuring upgraded internal systems. Construction of the first unit is expected to begin by 2030, with a launch target of 2037. Drawing from the Calvary-class experience, these submarines will feature DRDO-developed air-independent propulsion systems, advanced sonar, and cruise missile capabilities. The initiative reflects a strategic shift away from foreign reliance and is seen as crucial for India's naval dominance in the Indian Ocean region and future export potential. In a major push toward technological modernization, the Indian Army recently conducted two advanced military drills. Exercise Divya Drishti in East Sikkim and Exercise Drone Prahar in the Northeast. Officials revealed that Divya Drishti tested AI-enabled sensors, secure data links, UAVs and real-time decision-making systems in high-altitude terrain. 
Lieutenant General Rakesh Kapoor reviewed the exercise, while Lieutenant General Zubane Manwala emphasized its role in future warfare preparedness. Simultaneously, Drone Prahar validated drone integration and tactical operations, focusing on ISR capabilities, precision targeting, and secure multi arm coordination. Lieutenant General Abhijit S. Penlarkar supervised the operation. Both exercises aim to enhance sensor to shooter links command reach, and battlefield agility. These initiatives reflect the Army's commitment to Atmanur Barbarat and its transition into a tech-driven force ready for modern combat scenarios. On July 28 and 29, 2025, DRDO conducted two successful user evaluation trials of the Prale missile from Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Island, Adissa. These tests aim to validate both maximum and minimum range capabilities of the quasi-ballistic missile, which hit its targets with high precision. Developed with indigenous technology, Prala uses solid propellant and advanced guidance systems, and can carry various types of warheads. The tests were monitored by DRDO scientists, Indian Army and Air Force representatives, and industry partners. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh lauded the achievement, noting it would enhance India's strike capabilities. DRDO Chairman Dr. Samir V. Comet stated that the completion of this trial phase clears the path for the missile's near-term induction. The project involved major DRDO labs, Bharat Dynamics, BL, and multiple MSMEs. External Affairs Minister S. Jaishankar addressed the Lok Sava refuting claims of any connection between India's military action, under Operation Sindor, and trade talks with the U.S. He clarified that Prime Minister Modi and President Trump spoke only twice, on April 22, when Trump expressed sympathy, and on June 17, when he explained his absence from a Canada meeting. Jai Shankar denied any suggestion that U.S. mediation or trade negotiations influenced India's response to cross-border threats. Addressing further speculation, he highlighted that on May 9, U.S. Senator J.D. Vance warned of an imminent Pakistani strike, prompting a firm response from PM Modi, who vowed appropriate retaliation if India were attacked. His statement aimed to reaffirm India's strategic autonomy and reject foreign interference narratives surrounding Operation Sindor. Following the European Union's latest sanctions targeting Russia over the Ukraine conflict, Indian oil refiners have reportedly begun exploring alternatives to Russian crude, signaling a potential shift in procurement strategies. Although no significant change has been confirmed yet, traders and refinery officials noted that Indian processors are quietly sourcing oil from new suppliers as they evaluate the impact of the EU's new curbs. These sanctions include a lower price cap on Russian crude, restrictions on petroleum products refined from Russian oil, and penalties on a major Indian refiner partly owned by Russia. As the global oil market reacts to these developments, alongside OPEC plus production adjustments and rising trade tensions involving the U.S., Indian refiners are proactively diversifying supply sources. State-run Mangalore Refinery and Petrochemicals Limited recently made an unusually early purchase of 1.3 million barrels of Azari crude, for delivery between late August and September, marking a rare acquisition from Azerbaijan. Similarly, Hindustan Petroleum Corporation has bought multiple West African crude grades, including Nigeria's Bonnie Light, Ejina, and Kwa Ibo. Meanwhile, Reliance Industries Limited, known for its reliance on Russian and Middle Eastern heavy crudes, has procured Abu Dhabi's premium Merban crude, reflecting a broader search for supply stability amid geopolitical uncertainties. In a major boost to Russian aerial capabilities, the Su-35S fighter jets have reportedly begun operational deployment of the new K-77M long-range air-to-air missile, an advanced variant of the older R-77. With a dual pulse motor and a range nearing 190 kilometers, the K-77M features an active phased array seeker, 
and improved electronic countermeasure resistance, allowing high-precision strikes against fast-moving targets at extended distances. While initially intended for stealth jets like the Su-57, the missile has been seen mounted on Su-35S fighters, and evidence of its combat use has surfaced from the Ukraine conflict. This development holds significant implications for India's air power, particularly as its frontline Su-30 MKI fighters still rely on older R-77 and R-27 missiles. Following the 2025 India-Pakistan conflict and Pakistan's integration of Chinese PL-15E missiles into J-10CE and JF-17 Block III, India faces a temporary BVRAM gap. Indigenous Astra MK-2 and MK-3 missiles remain under development and years away from operational use. If adopted, the K-77M could restore the Indian Air Force's edge in long-range engagements, although integration challenges, geopolitical risks, and Russian production limitations could delay its deployment despite the platform compatibility with Su-30 MKI jets. India has taken a significant leap in its pursuit of defense self-reliance by approving a Rs. 723 crore funding package for the long-awaited Kaveri jet engine project. This move marks a turning point in India's ambition to develop indigenous jet engine technology, an effort that began in the 1980s under DRDO. Originally designed to power the Tejas fighter, the project was stalled due to international sanctions, lack of infrastructure, and technological gaps. However, under the Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative, the government is reviving it with fresh momentum. Of the total funding, rupees 472 crore is allocated for the development of a dry variant to power the Guttuck Stealth UCAV, while rupees 251 crore is earmarked for tech demonstration and certification. Though the current thrust capacity, 48 to 51 kilonewton, may not suit manned fighters like Tejas, it's ideal for drones. Indian firms like Godridge Aerospace have already delivered two derivative engines, with six more in the pipeline. Full-scale integration in drones is expected by 2025 to 26, with naval and high-thrust variants projected by 2027 to 30, ultimately aiming to power the fifth-gen AMCA fighter. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.